when I had long hair, when I had long hair, my husband was like, "That's sexy," but now he's like, "Get your head away from me." Oh, I have video proof of that now. We press record. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, that's what I look like this morning. <laughs> Was that after your 430 team Z session or before? <laughs> My <what is> this? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Let's just get started. So we uh it is Tuesday, August 2nd. Welcome to our team call. Uh, welcome. I know we have some new faces on the call tonight. We've been getting a lot of, um, I don't know, but like, I'm sh I know you guys have been recruiting too on your teams, but on our team, there's been some quite a few new coaches last week. Some it's kind of fired everybody up, so that's good. Um, so if there's any new coaches here, welcome to the call. We're happy to have you here, and I hope we hope you keep coming. <laughs> Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Next week, we are doing a Snapchat call. It's going to be a Snapchat training. And Catherine and Jason are actually kind of the Snapchat king and queen right now. So they're going to be doing the call next week and showing us all how to do that. So I'm really looking forward to that. I use it, but I don't have, and, and I even started that ghost code thing you guys said, but I'm just, I still don't get it. So I'm looking forward to that call. Um, yeah. We have a social media boot camp starting on the 8th. I did create the group tonight. So if you guys aren't interested in learning more about how and what and when and all that stuff about posting on social media and maybe fine-tuning your social media accounts we are going to be doing probably it's only going to be a short group probably only like five days and at least twice I plan on doing a zoom where I go through everybody's social media everybody's page that shows up to the call so we can critique those pages and we can kind of look at your posts and see you know what we can kind of fix on that and what are you laughing at? You guys, stop playing. You guys, <laughs> you guys are, are going to sit in the corner for the rest of the night. <laughs> okay, um, so August 8th, that's, that starts. Um, and then Super Saturday is this week. So if you are not registered for a Super Saturday, please try to get to one, especially if you weren't at Summit, because the events are what make this business amazing. They make you feel like you're part of something huge. Being able to talk to uh, people that are like-minded in the same room and be able to brainstorm and mastermind with them is, is really cool. So and you can see that we're part of something a lot bigger than you actually think. So I'm just going to start with a quick summit recap. Next year is in New Orleans. Woo -woo. I cannot wait for that. I always wanted to go there. So it's kind of awesome that it's there. Um, those of you that are brand new on this call, if you don't know it already, if you haven't been told, um, if you earn Success Club your first three months as a coach, you can go to New Orleans for free. For your, you, you'll get a free ticket to go. So that's awesome. Um, if you want any more information on how to do that, just message your upline or me or whoever. Um, they announced a couple things at Summit. The new Core to Force program coming out with uh, by Joel and Jericho. It's like a mixed martial arts program. It's 30 days long and it's going to be pretty much an ass kicker. I think we got a little bit of a, a sample <laughs> of it at yep. Summit on, on uh, 90, degree, 90 degree heat, blacktop in the morning, and yeah, it was not easy. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be a nice cardio burn. Um, they're also doing a something called a three-week yoga retreat. and That's what it's called, right? Yep. Three-week yoga retreat. And um, that's actually free for uh, Beachbody On Demand. So if you have Beachbody On Demand, you'll be able to access that for free. Mm -hmm. so that's really awesome. And they also have the cooking show starting um, with <laughs> Autumn and her brother. And that's going to be free too. Like Beachbody On Demand is getting so 
awesome. Like how can it's twelve dollars a month, and how can you like argue that the content on there is not completely worth? I'd pay I'd pay a hundred dollars a month for the content on there. I mean, it's just like insane. So, um, and then we have uh, the health bet, and that if you guys don't know what that is yet, um, they are actually donating. Well, putting they put already put a million dollars in a pot. And for every challenge pack sold in the month of August, they're putting $5 in the pot. So they said between one and $3 million. So however many challenge packs are sold this month, um, they're going to do the health bet. Basically it's like a diet bet, but it's different obviously because it's through beach body. But, um, if you enter five Shakeology, um, per week and three workouts per week in the app where it's all going to be done to the challenge tracker app um you'll be entered well not entered you will win money <laughs> it just if i don't know how much it's going to just depend on how many people actually do it so wouldn't it be nice if only one person finished <laughs> right, <you're rich. laughs> oh gosh so i think that's about it for the announcement I don't know. Okay. So like I said, we're all back from summit. We're all fired up and everybody's ready to work. And, um, everyone that didn't go to summit, I'm sure you all seen our videos and, uh, wished you were there videos, pictures, everything else. And, and you guys are all fired up too, just from seeing all of our stuff. But what I want to ask you guys is like, what are you going to do when this excitement starts to fizzle out? Because right now, you're jacked about everything. You're so excited again, everything. You're getting up in the morning, you're doing your power hours. Um, you're saying that you're not gonna lose focus, but let's face it, <laughs> we do lose focus. Um, it's an absolute disaster when you lose focus. This business is built with consistency. And if you're not being consistent with your vital behaviors, even a couple days, even taking a couple days off is not good because your page engagement and affinity is built upon you guys posting three to five times a day on it. So if you go three days without posting, Facebook says, oh, well, they're done. So I'm not going to show their page to anybody until you start posting on it again. But then you have to build that momentum back up and, and get going again. So it's just a disaster. I would say um, listen to your personal development and get a success partner that is gonna push you to stay focused and engaged. Um, join any push groups that she can, or that you can. <laughs> You guys are still texting. I see that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you. Um, and then uh, your why. Make sure. Yay, Catherine. Is, did you ask her to marry you officially? Did you get down on one knee? <laughs> so um, they, they were doing that like last year at summit. No, they did it last year at leadership. Oh, there was right actually people dropping on knees and asking. Because a success partner is kind of like marriage. Like you have to stay in constant contact and you have mm -hmm. to be talking to each other all the time. So there was literally people like dropping on one knee and saying, will you be my success partner? Like, in, like engaging, <laughs> just getting engaged. <laughs> so it was really cute and really fun. Um, your why, have your whys in front of you. Make a vision board. Write your why, I don't know print a letter out on an eight by 10 piece of paper, like your why, and just plaster it on your wall. I don't know, just do can something. I, can I jump in? Yes. Okay. And, so, and, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, cause me and Jason was just talking about this earlier today, that, okay, so Sherry said it's a disaster when you start it, when you have to keep restarting over, over and over and over again. And that's so true. And you know, think about this for a second, okay? Like, okay. <laughs> understand you're the CEO of your own business. You know, that's what we have going on here. Could you imagine, even if like Carl, for example, the CEO of Beachbody, if he lost his focus even once, if he's like, oh, you know what, man, we don't have any new products to announce at this summit this summer because 
lost my focus this spring. We just didn't, you know, development. We didn't really come up with anything. I just lost focus. I was distracted, you know, busy with the kids and stuff. We'll, we'll, but next year, you know, we'll be better next year. You know, if he even did that once, you'd be like, man, this company is not going to last. We got a flighty CEO. Maybe I better go to it works or whatever <laughs> you want to do. You know, but you'll be like, I got to start looking somewhere else because this company is getting ready to tank because the CEO is a flake. He, he, he lost his focus, you know, and we say it, or not we, but coaches in general, I hear it every two, three weeks. Oh, I lost my focus for the second time this month. You know, it's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, are you the CEO of your own business or are you not? If you are, be the CEO. You don't have the luxury of losing focus even once. You know, you got to get over that and quit starting over. And, you know, it's the same thing, like, you know, it's the same problem with when you have a new year's resolution and it lasts like three days mm -hmm. it's you know then this is what jason and i were talking about it's not the willpower willpower is weak you have to have that why power which is what mm -hmm. sherry just brought up you got to have that specific why it's something that you know and we say this all the time but i don't care until coaches quit saying they're starting over every two weeks we have to keep saying it because that's the solution when you have the why that is so burning within you that when you wake up, you know, I was telling Cherry, like, when I, I've never been so excited about working out in my <laughs> life. And I told her, I said, you know what? I said, I'm actually sleeping well now because when I lay down at night, the only thing I'm thinking about is, okay, I'm doing bulk shoulders tomorrow. I get to do my upright rows. I get to do my lateral work. You know, I'm thinking about the workout. I'm running, and that's what I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about, you know, oh, what do I got to do with the kids? What do I got to do about this? And I'm getting distracted. My brain's on overdrive and I can't sleep. I'm thinking about, oh, what workout do I get to do tomorrow? Not, oh, I have to work out tomorrow. I'm so excited about it. When I wake up, first thing I think about, got to get my calories in, got to get my pre-workout going. I get to work out this morning because I'm excited about it. I don't have to have willpower to will myself to do it because I'm excited about doing it. You know, so you, whatever excites you about doing this business, it's not just money. I don't care, you know, what you say, it's not that. You know, it's why do you want that money? Do you want to be home with the kids or whatever? You know, we've been through all this a hundred times, but you got to have that why, whatever it is, and you really got to have it for real. Not theoretically, but you got to have it in practice and you have to write it down and it really has to excite. You shouldn't even have to write it down. I don't have to write down, I'm excited about working out. You know, <laughs> I don't have to do that because I'm like, I'm fired up about it. You know, I'm getting in the best shape of my life. So I'm excited about it. So once your why is that powerful, you will do the things. You know, the how is easy. The vital behaviors is easy. That's a piece of cake. You know, it's, a monkey could do it. Uh, but what's going to keep you doing it, even when you don't feel like doing it, is being excited about that why. So anyways, quit starting over. Don't be the flaky CEO. And just be committed to what you're doing and build a business. So. Mic drop. <laughs> that's all i got okay brandy you want to start you want to take over that's all we got <laughs> i i kind of went into summit not wanting to get overly excited and come home and so i had been working towards like getting up doing my miracle morning and all that kind of stuff before summit but i will tell you this um I think the biggest takeaway I had was, well, from two, my favorite person ever is Gary V. And basically, you know, him saying, you know, if you can't invest in your business and quit effing complaining. And like, you know, that's just how he says it. Mm -hmm. You cannot invest in your business, quit complaining. And that like spoke to me because I've kind of always struggled with my white page, I like paying for ads and all that stuff. And that really spoke to me. If you cannot even pay $5 a month, for an ad, then you don't need to be complaining about not being able to talk to more people, right? So I kind of, that was kind of like my big takeaway that, you know, you are like, you are the CEO of your own business and, you know, you got to be serious about it. If you really are going to build a team and you're going to bring people on, you can't, you cannot stop. You cannot keep stopping and saying, I'm just having a bad day or, you know, summer's here and, it's just too busy to work my business. I could say that too, but right. figure right. it out. You will figure it out how to work around it. Like you get up at four thirty in the morning, like I have been, and do it. 
and then work a little bit later at night, then you have the time with your kids. But that is, like Derek said, your why has to be very strong. And, and Brandy, like he said, Brandy, just Brandy, I, mean, Brandy, you, Brandy. Huh? I just wanted to say on what you said right there, because this is important also, like, you know, people do do exactly what you just said. They're like, oh, well, you know, summer's here or whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever excuse they come up with, well, I couldn't work, you know, for the last three days or this week. You know, I'll start mm -hmm. again next week or whatever. You know, think about, you know, if you have a job that pays, you know, pays you much less than a successful beach body business, you know, no way in a million years would any of us ever say, well, I, I just got to take the week off, but you know, I'm, I'm too busy this week, you know, kids mm -hmm. got to talk or this, uh, I'll just, I'll go in next week or the week, week after, you know, you're committed, you know, you know, you're, you'll get fired. You won't get a check. Your boss is like, uh, uh you're here. I don't care what you got going on. We don't mm -hmm. have your shift covered. You're here tomorrow morning. And no one would consider the possibility of like, well, that's ridiculous. What do you mean? I can't, you know, I can't take mm -hmm. the week off, you know, pfft. How dare you? I got a life. Family's more important than work. Jeez. You know, yeah, of course, family's more important than work, but that's why we're doing it. You mm -hmm. know, you've all got to be a grown up and prioritize what you do to cr create a business and earn an income. You don't have the luxury of doing that. Even right. if it's 10 minutes at a time right. throughout the day. Oh, yeah. Right. What does that have Just to be all, all an hour all at once? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I've been spending anyway, my so alarm. Long Set your alarm for like like 10 minutes or 45 minutes at a time, mm -hmm. you know, and do three or four of those times. Like, I don't care if it's summer. I don't care if your kids are driving you crazy. I should be in a mental hospital right now. Like my three <laughs> kids are home. I'm not going to lie. It's just crazy at my house. I'm potty training my two-year-old who's peeing all over the floor, like all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just telling you that it doesn't matter that it's summer. It doesn't matter that you're traveling. You better still be taking your beach buddy on demand with you and better be drinking your psychology while you're on vacation and talking about it on social media mm -hmm. because that um, people are not going to join you if you stop and then you start again and then you stop and then you start again because they're not going to see you as a serious CEO and they're not going to see you. You know, why would I want to join their challenge group? Because like, are they going to be around in two weeks? Like that's seriously what they're going to say. Right. And, that um that spoke to me and something else Gary V said that really hit me and I can't even think what it was now. Um oh shoot, it'll come to me. Was the, it the FBA ad, the Facebook ads, Brandy? Yes. Yeah, it had something to do on the line of the Facebook ads, yeah, but I wish I could remember. It'll come to me. But him, like, I love him so much because he kind of speaks my language. Oh, I know what it is now because I looked at Lana because I brought your name up, Lana, and it's, it's a compliment. He said, you can have the most amazing, and I don't know how he said it. He surely probably didn't say the word amazing because you know how he talks. But you have the most amazing content and be posting and everything is wonderful. Like, your Facebook page looks amazing. You're giving all this stuff out for free. But what somebody that is earning an income does they will do that, but then they go for the ask. And he said, too many people are afraid to go for the ask. They're too afraid. And like when I was um, listening to him on YouTube today about Snapchat, he said, this is how I went for the ask. You know, I did all these Snapchat videos and he said, some girl messaged me and said, you know, thanks for that YouTube video. It really helped me. And he said, okay, will you please like use my Snap username, like call me out. So he's like, I went for the ask. So too, too many of us are scared to ask people to join our challenge group. You're giving away all this free content. And I mean that as a compliment, Lana, because I was like, Lana's page looks amazing. But I think you're afraid to go for the ask. Like you're scared to ask people. And that's what he was saying. And that really stuck with me too. And Sean T, of course, had the most amazing speech ever about if you lived in a glass house and everybody could really see you, um, would you be, would you really be telling the truth? Right. <laughs> you know, he talked about his past as a child and the things that he went through. And I got to listen to his podcast because of it. And his podcast is awesome, by the way. And I didn't even know all the things that he had been through, but he talked about how he had to be truthful with himself, you know, to be able to help people. So 
if you're put in a glass house and people can really see your life, are you being truthful about your journey and what's really going on with you on social media? Right. If that makes sense. You gotta be vulnerable. Yeah. Because we can go through the motions and post, we drank our shake, we did our workout, but are you really being truthful about your life? Like what is really going on? What is really going to connect people to you? It's not going to be because you drink technology every day or work out. You have to have something. Nobody cares that we're coaches. That's just kind of my thought. Nobody yeah. gives a crap. That we we're gotta be authentic. We got to yeah. be authentic. They're going to go to you. And this is the hardest lesson I had to learn, but they're, you know, over the last couple of years, they're going to go to you because of who you are. You know, they want to know like what's inside Brandy. Like what does she struggle with? You know, what, does she struggle with anxiety and depression and all this stuff? That's when people really start to be like, wow, I struggled with that too. Maybe it's self-esteem issues. And they're going to start coming to you like, wow. Like I just seen Lauren's face. Like, I'm sorry. Like, but like her husband being on deployment and things like that, like that when he was like, people are going to come to her just because she's talking about that. Like, and Lena too, like, wow. Yeah. My husband was gone for a year too. Like I can really connect with you and you're still doing your workouts and stuff. You're so positive. Mm -hmm. So you really have to think about the five things about you other than fitness. And that is really what you need to be talking about the majority of the time. Well, you know, you don't have to go. There's some things like some things that just aren't anybody's business, but you do need to break open. You're kind of like an onion, right? And like your layers and you do need to be more honest about your life and what you're going through and things like that. So I kind of took that away too. Yep. Hey, Brady, can I elaborate on that real quick? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just was thinking when you said that it just reminded me, um, so, um, a few of us went to Summer Tucker and Chad Tucker's, uh, rooftop leadership, the, before summit started, it was like 10 to three ish. Um, and it was amazing content, but, um, I actually got to talk to her for a second and I asked her, you know, um, in the military lifestyle. And I know some of you maybe are in careers that, um, it could compromise your job. You know, if you go into too much detail or, um, you know, even sharing, um, I mean, obviously it goes without saying, obviously I'm not going to share like my husband's location or anything compromised yeah. like that, but there are certain things that like, if you were to share too much, then, you know, specifically a coworker would know that that's what the issue is or something. But, um, so I asked her, you know, like, um, how did she deal with the fact that, you know, through all those deployments, um, with building her business, like with not giving too much detail on like what Chad was, you know, what was going on in their marriage, like what was going on, like, cause I mean, she's really vocal about that now, but he's also not in a war zone or he's not active duty anymore. So basically her, her advice to me was share your feelings. So um, you don't have to be a big sap, but I mean, like if you're upset, like if you're going through a lot, like don't, don't be afraid just to share your feelings about it. Cause that's what people are going to connect with. Um, I mean, if you go into acronyms and things like that, Lane, I mean like military stuff, people are just going to like right over their head. Um, I mean like my dad and Jed actually, they speak in acronyms and it's like, whatever, but some people will get it. But anyways, what she was saying is basically speak from your heart. Um, because I know I used to get really wrapped up into like, well, I can't really like, it would paralyze me because I'm like, I can't really talk about a lot of this stuff. Like I just can't like, um, and so how do I build a business when I'm basically kind of, you know, immobile with like all these things. And so she just said to, to share your feelings about, um, you can talk about deployment and how it's affecting you or talk about like, um, your job in a way of like how it's affecting you, you know, related to you're taking you away from your kids or whatever. But, um, anyways, for military spouse, it was very important for me to hear that, you know, just continue speaking from your heart, continue speaking about your feelings because that's what really people are going to connect with. So she that's kind of, that's awesome. She's been she on a national wake up call, not this last one, but it's been a couple of years ago, maybe. And I love this. And I still remember this. She said something about when her husband was gone and their dog was dying. I don't know if any of you remember that. And she went to Walmart and she needed to know where the dog food was and didn't know where the dog food was. And she asked this guy, the worker, 
and he was just about ready to get off work and she said can you please tell me where the dog food is and she was like crying and you know her dog was already dying and all this stuff and he says i'm sorry i'm off the clock i can't help you and she's like no i just want to know where the dog food is and he would not tell her where the dog food is and she was like oh my god you know people just want you to care about them like it, that's kind of how she said like people you just need to be a caring person and like you know and that was just a great analogy or whatever how she said that was he wouldn't even tell me where the dog food was you know because he was off work so guys it just really is about building those relationships with people it just is mm -hmm. um yeah and then one thing that i failed to do for a long time um the whole call to action thing was pretty intimidating to me for whatever reason i felt that was a very official mm -hmm. thing to like like i felt that was kind of like a very um official thing to do like okay and now here like it made me the expert or something and that made it kind of seem like i was uh a know-it-all or something i don't know it sounds silly but once i started like asking people's feedback like or asking has this for instance summer was probably like have you ever had a situation like that or you know just opening up that dialogue because some people might just really need for you to ask them how like if they've ever experienced something like that and they may only feel and i always make sure if it's something that might be sensitive like if this is something that you want to talk about like feel free to message me especially with military stuff like open up i mean like simply invite them to private message you don't just assume that they're gonna voluntarily like hey really like feel like i can talk to you like invite them to have the ability to reach out to you so I know it seems so ju like so trivial or so like uh like simple but like those little details of like a simple conversation is something that i think we get really wrapped up in all the other crazy things that are you know go into this job about you know social media and um facebook what not to post what to post like the more just raw you are i feel like that's like the mm -hmm. where it's at so that's all I mean. like that. <laughs> I mean, I had like sure. 40 some people reply to my aunt's post and I'm like, seriously, like I asked, what do people use for ants to kill ants? And I had like everyone like, let me tell you. I'm like, come on guys. Like seriously, I just had like a really great post like 20 minutes ago and you guys said nothing. <laughs> I <laughs> so, love to hear their opinion. Yeah. So crazy. That's how it is. That happens so many times. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that is really just by asking a random question. Then they're going to see your fitness graph. Cool. Anybody else at Summit that had any good takeaways that they want to share? Actually, my yeah. biggest takeaway was from. Um, I thought it was going to be from the spouses thing. That was the thing I was most looking forward to, but mine was just from coach Jimmy and Chris Reed when they were talking about how, how your business is so affected by your fitness journey and all that. I was just like, Oh my God, he is speaking to me right now. Like they were, you know, going into how you need to commit to a program 100% because why would anybody come to you if you're not doing what you're telling them to do? And I was just like, okay. I mean, I know that, but the way that they said it was just so mind, I don't know, mind blowing. And they said, but, don't jump around. Don't be jumping around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see so many people say that too. From one yeah. program to the next, you have to pick a program and actually complete it. Take a before picture, mm -hmm. complete the entire program, and then take the after photo. And also when it comes to talking about the why thing, I had like a revelation when I was at Summit. I was like, you know, my why before was to prove Jason wrong. So, no, I'm being honest. It was to prove him wrong. And so when he jumped on board, I was like, I, what do I do? And I noticed like, I was like, oh, well, as soon as he started coaching, I like, you know, I wasn't doing it because I didn't have a purpose anymore. And that's like, I think something that's so important to get across is like your why changes when you mm -hmm. hit that why you need to find something else that motivates you because otherwise you're just going right back to where you were. So I think we constantly need to be reevaluating our whys. Your why should be your passwords. Like I make, I make my why and it totally when I wanted to be five star, though I didn't make a leap that year, but 
I was like one point away, but I totally my password for everything, and I can it's changed now, everybody. So <laughs> <laughs> five star elite, and all of my passwords was five star elite. So I had to like type it out all the time, and guy. the more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you make sure it happens because you're constantly typing it. And I think too, doing something scary to push you, like I think what what do you want? Hold on, what? what? Oh my gosh, he needs his melatonin so he can fall asleep. That's no. <laughs> Catherine, the same thing happened to me when I like left nursing because that was my big why all along. Mm -hmm. And then, like after I left nursing in last May, not last, this past May, but the May before, like I'm like, I kind of lost focus for a while because I'm like, I didn't really, I didn't have that like burning, like I achieved my why. So I was like, well, now what? What, what now what do I want <laughs> so I had the same thing happen to me until I so I had to reevaluate and figure out what I wanted so I had yeah. something scary who pushes you like we built a new house issue. what Carolyn mm -hmm. I have the opposite issue I can't I, I've been sitting here trying to figure out what my why is <laughs> but then on um Jimmy had that was, Eric Johnson he was on the teams he call and he said something um about flipping your why around what would happen if you had to go back to work because i'm doing beach body full time right so that was really a light bulb moment for me is to think about what would happen if this didn't work you know that's a really yeah. that's yeah that is eye-opening fear is yeah. Yeah. fear yeah fear is a big motivator yeah. big mm -hmm. building a new yeah. house and having a huge house payment that scared the crap out of me that scared the living crap out of me. Mm -hmm. And getting pregnant with my third kid, I think that was just like, I gotta make this work, no matter what. All right. And you get so if you guys are having issues with uh, figuring out your why, do it that way. Figure out what will happen if it doesn't work. Right. I like that. Do you want me to go over the stuff I was gonna go over? <laughs> I yeah. think we're good. Maybe we can okay. see it next week. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> We're already at 34 minutes. So, yeah. I think anybody else have any takeaways? Stacey, do you have anything to add? You were there. Mary Ann, do you guys have anything to add? Cheryl, I'm looking. Judy's on here. Posting on purpose. Amy's on here. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of people on here. Okay. Okay, okay I'll talk. Yay. <laughs> You know, there? Does somebody else want to go first? No, go ahead, Cheryl. Go ahead, Cheryl. Okay. Okay. What I found quite interesting, um, looking at my notes even, when they said that you should be your spouse's biggest cheerleader and to communicate with them and tell them your why. And my husband has not been in a part of the business. He's a coach, but he doesn't do anything with it. And he doesn't ask me questions. He doesn't tell me I can't do something but he doesn't really participate and encourage. And so I came home and told him a little bit about Summit, and I explained a little bit about my why and what I would like to, to accomplish to help us both with this business. And then I said, would you like to go next year? And normally when I invite him to something that I do, he says no, even though I go to, with him to every one of his conventions and stuff and sit and listen to agriculture by the hour. Um, <laughs> He usually doesn't join me. And so when I said, would you like to go? He didn't say no. He just kind of laughed and said, well, he says, I'm, I'm, I might when we get closer time. And I said, no, you don't understand. If you don't get a ticket now, you're going to be on a wait list. Right. I said, There's that many people that want to go to this thing that within a couple days or a week, you're on a wait list. And I told him, I said, I could go ahead and get the tickets and get them non or get him where they're transferable for him. So if he couldn't go, because we, we helped take care of his dad. But it was just kind of interesting how before he was never really too interested or he would hold back or something. And this time I didn't get shut down. And since he just retired from teaching for 41 years, I kind of went at it as the financial angle. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what I'd like to do, honey. I would like to make enough money to start out with to cover our monthly expenses so that you can save your retirement check for emergencies or other things. Mm -hmm. So that kind of put mm -hmm. a, a 
his in his You're mind. Be a sugar mama. <laughs> and so, so I'm thinking say you want to be a more, <laughs> share with him more, then maybe he will do the same. So that was a big takeaway for me. <laughs> you knew that was going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> well, that's all I had. Thank you. I like that. Awesome. I like that, Cheryl. I think the biggest thing out of Summit was just seeing everybody. That's my favorite part. Yeah. It is my yeah. favorite part for sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And it's like you, it's like the people that you don't, Cheryl, it's like the people that you don't, um, that like, we don't see each other often. And it's like, you don't even, it's like, you're you see, like, it's not weird at all. Right. And it's like, like, for one, I've never met Mary Ann ever. And it's like, it wasn't weird. <laughs> no, it feels like you know them already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really cool. Everybody you. You're like, oh my God, well, I don't know how I'm finally, I'm seeing you in person, but it feels like I've met you a million times. Well, it's because of stuff like this. Yeah, because we talk like this. It makes mm -hmm. a huge difference. Yeah. Okay, I have one more thing just to throw out there. And I was just, I remember I wrote down like, there's two things that were kind of reoccurring themes with everyone um, for the most part. And one of the things was stop getting ready to get ready. Just do it already. Um, mm -hmm. And just let it flow. Like just, I mean, that's going back to what Sherry, you guys are talking about just a little bit ago. And then um, we're making homemade laundry detergent. That's why it's all kind of crazy. over here. <laughs> um, so, and then the last thing is um, like, who are we casting the net to? Like who, who are you putting like all this information out there, like they were basically saying like, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time and their time. If you know good and well that like, basically you're just, you know, catching all these people to come into your, to your, um, to get successful points or whatever it is. But basically like if you're putting yourself out there and it's not actually you, then you're casting the net to people and they're going to come into you. They're going to get drawn into you and you're going to get false hope thinking that you've got these people that are like all about what you're doing. But then all of a sudden, like they disappear and then your confidence is zapped and you're like, what the heck, man? Like what the heck happened? And it's like, well, you're not a gymnast. So stop talking about gymnastics all the time or whatever. You know, if you're not really into that kind of stuff, stop talking about it all the time. Like, you know, because these people, if you want to, them to be a lifer with you, then you need to be attract, putting that what's out there that's actually a habit of yours or a hobby of yours or whatever. So, like, I don't know how many times people are saying that, but I just love the analogy of, like, who are you casting your net to? Yeah. So, I was like, okay, that's so important to continuously remind yourself of that. So... I know I've cast my net to some weirdos, and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> I know Brandy has. Uh, Brandy's got some awesome stories. They're no longer with me, though. I know. <laughs> They're no longer with me, though. I think we all have. Oh, my. <laughs> we all have. It's a, lear it's a learning process for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically, don't cast your net to a bunch of people and have these big old dreams and big goals and saying you're going to, like, make all this money and have all these goals and then have it be people that are just going to, like, that aren't mm -hmm. going to be there with you. So, I mean, I'd rather have like five people that are with me and really working hard and are all about the vision yeah. of what my tribe's about than to have 15 that are sucking the life out of me like a succubus. And <laughs> yeah. Well, people need to know, like, Carl Beckler kind of changed his direction a little bit at Summit. People need to know it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. If you're constantly saying this is like making it look easy all the time, you're going to attract a bunch of people that don't want to work for nothing. They're just yeah, they're right. to hand it to them. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, it's never handed to any one of us. Mm -mm. So, yeah. yeah. So you definitely don't want to be putting it out there that, oh, this is so simple. This is so wonderful. Life is just perfect all the time. And, right. you know, because then you're just going to get a bunch of lazy people that don't want to work. And I've done that before, too, in the past. Yeah. Me, too. Oh. Last year. All last year. Although <laughs> I got... I got yeah. some good ones, but I'm telling you, I, I signed up 72 coaches last year. Every well, but it's work best time. And like, oh yeah, maybe 10 of them are still with me. So <laughs> I think that's that. all they were even talking about. Yeah. A lot of the money posts 
you know, like a lot of coaches were starting to talk about their income, which is great in a way, but then you get people that just think that, oh, in two years I'm going to be making, you know, and they don't realize how many nights you cried yourself to sleep because somebody unfollowed you or your dad deleted you like my dad did <laughs> or, you know, like just, you know, how many people you get talking about, you know, they don't really know the, how hard it is because it's hard. Yes, it is. Sure. So. Quality over quantity for sure, Tammy. Yep. Yes. Yep, yep. For sure. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. All right. Well, unless anybody else wants to share, we can wrap up. It was a great call, I think. <laughs> anybody else? Thanks for me. Can somebody take a picture? Because my phone's dead. Oh, yeah. Oh. Done. Oh, thanks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. Wait. Sorry, let me take another yeah. look. Yeah, should we all look yeah. and like yeah. ask yeah. Yeah. Brandy, make sure it's up high. Come on, Brandy. Me have, this is me after some <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. So um, every one of you better be there next year. Every one of yes. you. I could not afford it the very first year I went. But you <laughs> I could not afford it the very first year I went. But you just you figure it out and you you yeah. might pinch pennies, but you figure it out and you just do it. You gotta your business save for it. You have all this time to save for it. Yes, you have a whole yes. year. It'll it'll um do it'll like change your business every year. year. And sleep in her car. Melanie Mitchell slept in her car her first summit. Yeah, really? I know. I love somebody. Yes, she did. Yes. Now. Wow, I didn't know that. Twice. And Bonnie, Bonnie Engel, this is Bonnie Engel. Bonnie Engel, like, went on a maxed out credit card almost, and she was scared to death to even buy anything that would just be maxed out. Right. And she, like, shared a room with, like, tons of people that she didn't know just to get there. Right. <laughs> Not the so, top Melanie sleeping in her car. It's not glamour. It might not be glamorous your first year. I mean, depending, but it's it will change your business. It it will. Yeah. Every year my business grows because of it. Yeah. Just that. So yeah. All right. Great. Well, it was awesome. And everybody have a good night. Thanks for coming to the call. Bye. See you next week. Good night. Snap. See you next Snap. Year. Snap it up next week. <laughs> <laughs>